So if you want to design your own bass sound in drum and bass, EDM, house, dubstep, pretty much anything in that area, there's only really three things that you need to dial in on the synth and then everything else is experimentation from there. Let's have a look at those three key factors, how you can apply them to basically any synth and then you can develop your own sounds from that starting point. So regardless of what type of synth you're going to be using, whether it's Massive, FM8, Serum, which are three different types of synthesizer, in today's example we're going to use Alchemy, which can be a subtractive synth, an FM synth, or a wavetable synthesizer. It does the whole gambit. Come on, Monami. But even if you're using the base level subtractive synthesizer that only provides a couple of waveforms like square, triangle, and saw, well, you're going to be able to do these key factors. I actually make most of my bass sounds, those growling reeses that sit under the soulful DMB that I generally do, I make them in Monarch, which is an emulation of a very old Moog synth and it does the job exactly the same way. It's the same principle. So the first principle here, using multiple oscillators and detuning. Very simply, let's say we take a saw wave and we play that saw wave back on the keyboard like so. When we turn another oscillator on and we play back that exact same saw wave, everything just gets louder. In fact, it doubles in level because the two saw waves are exactly the same and they back each other up. However, look at what happens when we move something via a whole semitone in detuning. It changes very drastically and was generally an unpleasant sound because we're now playing two notes that are harmonically out of whack and out of balance of one another. Even if we move these semitones down in increments, something like a saw wave, which is so harmonically rich, as in it has a huge amount of harmonics, it's a very complex waveform, it just kind of falls out of tune and doesn't sound great. Even if we use increments like three, six, and nine, which are going to work within a general scale, nothing really balances until we go a full octave at plus or minus 12. Today's video is sponsored by DistroKid. They let me get my music out to all of the major distributors and they do that at a price an independent artist can easily afford. If you're ready to get your music or beats out there and want to release an unlimited amount of music each year, check the link in the description below for a discount off of your first year of unlimited distribution with DistroKid. Your synth will also have a fine tuning and this is a hundred cents either way. And this is the tuning in between those whole semitones. The saw wave is just ever so slightly out of phase rather than drastically and we get a much different sound. And this is just they pulse in and out of phase, they reinforce and retract from one another. We've got a large range that we can experiment with here. The further we pull it, the more frequent that pulsing gets. And this is where the magic happens. Now we've heard some pretty interesting things happening there when we have two oscillators and one slightly detuned. However, everything still sounds very narrow in the middle and mono, right? Well, our second key principle is something that helps with width and overall enveloping of that bass. And this is called unison. What unison does, it will take one oscillator and double it up. So we have our single, we put unison on and boom, we've suddenly got two oscillators working in that same field. Now when we detune these two oscillators we get a very different feel. Things become very stereo instead. So now there are two voices of the same saw. And as you can hear this gives us a different effect and this gives us a stereo effect. And this is based on the detune amount here. And this is similar to what we were doing before. If we bring this down we now have that single layered saw wave because it's two voices. The detune is how much we separate the two.
And as you can hear, this can be really refined in how slow it operates. It feels like the same principle. We've got two oscillators, they're both doing the same thing. Now if we combine principle one with principle two, we can now create this ripping, undulating, phase shifting sound enveloping the overall listener. So far we've done this using just saw waves, but these two principles laying together, they'll work with the triangle, square, and even your way more complex waveforms as well. Now the third part of all of this is the fundamental of all subtractive synthesis. Take a complex waveform and use filtering to subtract it down. And when we combine that with modulation like LFOs and envelopes, well things go to a whole new level. Filtering allows us to remove frequency from the sound. This is simply known as subtractive synthesis. We've created a very rich harmonic signal. A filter removes some aspect from that. And there are multiple types of filter that let us do various creative things. Here's an example with the most simple of filters, the low pass filter. And dialing our cutoff back. So we've got that kind of sound that we seek. Maybe a little bit of resonance to help it poke out in that area. Then here in Alchemy, we can link this cutoff to an LFO, which pretty much any synth created in the last two decades will let you do. I'm gonna let it sync to one over four. So that's like a four on the floor pattern. And then the amount that we set the depth here is how much that cutoff will move. We can do other things, manipulating the filter, like the resonance, we could maybe make it uncomfortably high, but then utilize, say, an ADSR or an envelope to bring it down quite rapidly. Filters will often allow themselves to be driven with circuit emulation, manipulating the sound further. Now, when we start experimenting with different filters and different waveforms and different tunings, this is where everything else comes alive. But these three principles here are all you need to start designing your own bass sounds and getting to those desired effects that you want. And here, we've not even started applying external effects like distortion and EQ and compression and reverb and all the other fun stuff that comes with it. But from here, it's down to you to start experimenting with what's gonna work and be fun in your track.